So, we got a huge, huge, huge formula today, kind of putting it all together. So, 3.4 is slope intercept form. Uh, mathematicians are always utterly logical. So, slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b, literally from right to left. There are two new things other than x and y. And x and y are there because remember, any equation with two variables is really a relationship between the two where I could plug one in and find the other. So, the two new things other than y and x is the slope and the y intercept. So, from left to right, we call this form the slope intercept form. The slope y intercept just doesn't have as nice of a range. I was supposed to wonder, like, I, I'm trying to keep all the different formulas in my head. Yeah, slope, one slope, and all that. Straightforward, right across. This is the one and only formula that you need for graphing. Uh, we'll go over. What about point slope? Uh, that's the 3.5. That's what we'll okay. go over. But you don't ever need that. I'll slow your row. Okay. All right. So, examples. Okay, let's just do a couple of examples here. So find the slope and y-intercept. So here we go, number two. y equals 9x plus 4. Number four, y, oops, six, sorry, um, y equals negative three-fourths x plus six. Number eight, y equals 10x, then kind of going backwards here, number 10, y equals seven, and number 12, y equals five minus x. So we don't fully understand the y yet, but just direct, immediate application of that formula, right? The formula is y equals mx plus b. So, what's the slope of the y-intercept of the first one? Yeah. yeah, and make sure if there's a negative, you bring it with it. But in this case, yeah, everything's positive. All right, so we start with number two. Victoria helped us. The slope is nine. You can use the word y-intercept, you could use the letter D. A start by using y-intercept and slope maybe on the first one, and then go to N and D eventually once everybody's comfortable. Okay, so it's the slope of the second one, so the other Victoria. Minus three-fourths. Yeah, so slope is negative three-fourths, doesn't matter where the negative sign goes as long as there's only one of them. Okay, and the y-intercept is? Six. And again, bring the negative if there is one. Next one a little trickier. So somebody other Victoria or Joseph, help me out on number eight. What's the ten? For slope? Ten is the slope, so I'm gonna use N now. N is ten and one. Yes. <coughs> Zero. Zero. Because and the way I think about it is we have plus what number? Zero. Yeah, we're adding zero on. So the y intercept is zero. Okay. What about number 10? Somebody other than Victoria and Nick Gorgeous coming out. Uh, was that 7? Yep, yeah, y equals 7. Slope is zero. zero. Yeah, slope is 0 because you could rewrite this as y equals <clears throat> 0 x's plus 7. <clears throat> Okay, so slope is zero and y is seven. Yeah. Well, not y. What well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I know what I mean. That's always like a C or B quality answer. <laughs> Just take a few points off and give me some other credit. Okay. So number twelve. First thing I would do is rewrite it. Okay. So rewrite this. Always write the variable first. This is y equals the negative is attached to the x. So negative x plus 5. Now it's easy, right? So the slope is? Yeah, so and the y-intercept is? Perfect. Okay? And then you can immediately graph it, right? So, 
Moving on to a couple where it says find the slope <coughs> and intercept and then graph. Okay, I'll erase that. Switch pens and never like write in a breath. <coughs> so now it says graph using. Slope intercept form. So here's number 28. We have y equals 3x plus 1. So let's start. What's the slope? What's the y intercept? Slope is 3. Yeah. Y yeah. And what I would always do here, literally always, is I will write this in the two possible ways we can write it. So this slope is either as a fraction, three over one. positive three over positive one, or minus three over minus one. Yeah. So I would always write it in both ways. That way I can go to the right, and I can go to the left, and I can make a bunch of points and make sure they're all on the line. Okay? So I go over to my graph, <clears throat> and here's the big idea. Which do I do first, the slope or the y-intercept? Y-intercept. Why? So you know where to start? Yeah, exactly. Too often, people want to start with the slope, and so it says up one, right one, and where did they go up one, right one from? The origin. Yeah. The origin. This is not likely on your graph. Every once in a while, a line goes through that point. Okay? But if you throw a bunch of lines on here, if you took a bunch of spaghetti sticks and threw them at the board, the chances of it landing right on zero, zero are pretty slim. So most lines don't go through the origin. Some do, for sure, but do not think this has any special connotation where this is on your line. The very first thing you have to do is you have to start somewhere. And it's fitting, because this is your starting value. If you have no x's, you start at 1, and then every step you add 3, add 3, add 3. So it's fitting that you would start at the y-intercept of 1. That's your first point that you put, that put down. And I will write this out in instructions, but I always find the intuitive approach first works. Okay, so we start at y-intercept of 1, obviously on our y-axis. And then, what's the slope tell us to do? Up 3, or up, one, or up 3 over 1. Up 1, 2, 3 over 1. I'm always going to do it more than once, except this time it goes off my graph. So down 1, 2, 3, left 1 is the same. Down 1, 2, 3, left 1 is the same. And so here's my line. There we go. <clears throat> and I will always do as many points as fit on my graph, just because I like to be here. <clears throat> All right, so the big idea there is And that's basically it, okay? All we add from here is... All we add from here is basically, maybe you don't start with a y input. Maybe you have to solve for that. Or maybe we give you some information and you have to find the equation of the line. And that's actually some problems that I wish they had in this section, <clears throat> which they don't give you, is a graph. And then you have to find the y-intercept and the slope and write the equation. In math, it's always a good practice when I read you set forwards to do it backwards. So I'm a little, little disappointed in this book that those problems are in the neck. But what are you going to do? Okay. Um, I'm going to add one big picture note. Yeah, here are actually two big picture notes here. But that is really section 3.4. Okay, here's a couple big ideas. 
Okay, one is So when we say y equals mx plus b4, people get confused because sometimes there aren't x's, sometimes there aren't numbers. The biggest thing is you just get y by itself. As long as you have y equals, it's always in y equals mx plus b4, right? We have, I mean, we have examples like, you know, y equals 5 minus x, y equals 10, well, 10x y equals 7. These are all examples that are in y equals mx plus b form, even though they don't look like it, right? Some will be exactly 3x plus 1. But a lot of other ones will look different. But as long as it's y equals, it's in the right form, immediately you can say the slope is, the y-intercept is, and graph it with no arithmetic at all. I mean, maybe you rewrite this, or maybe you write plus 0, but I wouldn't call that arithmetic. Okay. <clears throat> so that's a huge idea. Okay? And this always works. Except. Right? Always works. Except. Right? And what's our one exception? It was our exception in 3.2. It was our exception in 3.3. Oh, vertical lines. Yeah. Or in general, just even remember horizontal and vertical are possibly exceptions. Yeah, so if there is no y in your equation, for example, x equals 3, right? You obviously can't solve x equals 3 for y because there is no y. Every other equation, like y equals 7, that's one of those kind of exceptions where you go, that's horizontal or vertical. But we can just say the slope is 0 because it's y equals 0x plus 7. <clears throat> Y-intercept is 7. Put a point at 7. You go up 0 over 1, up 0 over 1, up 0 over 1. No exception. All of these are ground with slope y intercept. The only exception is when you have x equals 3. And let's look at y. Right? You can always ask why. Why is that an exception? Well, let's just make a little t-chart. Okay, all right, here's my x and my y. The rule is x equals 3. So let's just put x equals 3. Make up a couple of <coughs> values. Right? Let's put it on a graph and just check out what's going on here. So 1, 2, 3, a point. 1, 2, 3, a point, a point, a point. Okay. So there's my vertical line. All right? So what's the slope of that line? Let's put it in y equals mx plus b. Right? Yeah. The slope of this is some number over 0 is undefined. Well, that's okay. Whatever. Like we ever needed m. Let's find what the y-intercept is. What's the y-intercept? Yeah, there isn't one. So you can start to see why we can't put this in y equals mx plus b form if the slope is undefined and there is no y-intercept. Is that the only undefined slope? Is the yeah, vertical. Line? Only undefined slope. And then um, there is the one possibility that the vertical line is on the y-intercept. So then the y-intercept would be every single point on the line, every single thing on the y-axis is a y-intercept. So even then, it's still like there isn't a b. So either way, every vertical line, there is no m, there is no b, so you couldn't possibly write it in y equals. And the real reason is there is no y in the equation. Right? If there is a y, solve for y. If there is not, it's your vertical line exception. That's it. Okay? So that was one big idea. The one other thing is, let's just solve for y. Okay? So, the other examples, and I went a little out of order, I went into the 20s, uh, but now let's go back. And these ones say, solve for y, and then 
find the slope and y intercept. And so this is that practice from section 2.4. You can see why every little thing we did in section or in chapter one and chapter two keeps coming up over and over. So in section 2.4, we were solving for what if there was you know, a bunch of letters and we want to get all the other letters to one side. Look at number 14, which is negative 9x plus y equals 5. So this is exactly like one of those. We've got multiple variables and we want to solve for y. So hopefully, the anxiety about this is gone. <clears throat> so how we're solved? Yeah, no crazy division, no magic. We would say, and you could even say this is an analogous problem too, and everything but y, plug in a number, right? Let's plug in one because that's easy. So you would say this is like this, what would we do? We would add 9 to both sides. Okay, great. So same thing over here, we'd add the 9x to both sides. I'm always going to write my x's first. That's going to skip any slope y-intercept mistakes. So y equals 9x plus 5. Great. It's in y equals mx plus p form. So let's find the slope and the y-intercept we got. M equals yeah. Okay. And if we wanted to graph this, it doesn't ask us to graph it, but it's as easy as going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, putting a dot, and then this slope says go up 9, right 1, or, I mean, sorry, yeah, no, I said it right, or down 9, left 1. So up 9, over 1, dot, down 9, left 1, dot, right, and it's that quick. And on the test, every single question where I ask you to graph it, I will have a little grid that your graph will for sure fit on, and you will always be able to fit at least two points, more often three to five points, and I will put one right there for you. You don't need your own graph paper, I don't want you drawing freehand, an ugly thing. I will put it there, and I will exactly need to see the dot in the right place. If the dot is off by one, or if your line so wavy it misses dots, I'll take off points. So you just use the side of your calculator, or the side of a book, or the side of a piece of paper, or whatever you want to use the side of to draw a straight line. Okay, but it's as easy as get it in this form, that's the slope, that's where I start. Start there, go in that direction, you're done. And I mean, these problems should be the bread and butter of this chapter, and it should be, I mean, I'm not saying rush through and you're rushed for time, but you could go back and check, you could make a T-chart, you could do it in a lot of different ways. But this sort of problem is just right away, y equals, I got slope y intercept, start here, go in that direction, done. Okay. Let's do one more. Uh, <clears throat> because the most common form they could put it in when they say solve for y is two steps. Right? You have, like 24, you have some x's plus some y's equal some. Okay, again, this is called standard form. Standard form is not something that's incredibly useful for graphing. It's useful in other situations. In chapter 4, we're going to use this form, and we'll talk about it, but uh, we're not going to go over it. And I'm not going to ask you on a test to put anything in standard form, so you don't need to know that vocabulary. But this is what standard form looks like. Some x's plus some y's equal something, and everything's a nice integer. All right. So what do we do if we want to solve for y? <clears throat> always add or subtract first. No crazy division. Division is always the last step. So first, we're going to move everything that doesn't tell y to the other side. Okay, so we got 3y equals, always write the x's first. Okay, and then last step. Divide by three. Yeah, divide by three. Remembering to divide every term. This is a term, addition sign, this is a term. So every term gets divided by three. A lot of times people write all divided by three, which is correct, just leads to more mistakes. So I would say, just split it right away. Say every term gets divided by three. 
So we get y equals, I would always pull, if it's multiplication, division of one big term, I would always pull the coefficients out front. So I would write negative 4x over 3 as negative 4 thirds x. Okay, it's exactly equivalent, but again, less mistakes. Being comfortable to pull that coefficient out front, plus 4 thirds, and that's it. So our slope is negative 4 thirds, and that's it. And our y-intercept is 4 thirds. Yeah. So let's do one more problem like that, uh, and then I'll just give you a peek at one other type of problem, and that's it. Okay, another problem like that would be 46, where it says do exactly that, except now graph it. Okay, so 46, same problem, except follow it by graph it. So 5x plus 3y equals 15. It's in standard form. Rearrange it to get y equals. So somebody other than John, Joseph, and... Victoria, help me out. Mm. You're John. I'm John. Okay. You'll, you'll get Monday eventually. Monday morning. It's like week three. Minus 5x. Perfect. Ruthie, yeah. So minus 5x first. Always addition and subtraction first. The division comes last. Okay, so we got 3y equals x is first plus 15. And then everything. Last and you're going to divide? Five. Three, three. Divide just by three. If you divide by three, y, then the y is on the bottom and things mm -hmm. cancel. It. And we divide every term by three. So now we have y equals, I'm going to put all that jumble of fractions first. So negative five thirds x plus, and then this just becomes five. Okay, so Ruthie, what's the slope here? Negative 5 thirds, and the uh, y-intercept is? 5. Five. So I go over here and make a nice, big, pretty graph on my graph paper. I would so strongly recommend having graph paper, but I understand if you don't have any, I'll give you some on the test. And so where do I start, Ruthie? At 5. Yeah, on the, which axis? One. Yeah, on the y-axis. This is a y-intercept. So one, two, three, four, five. So there's my dot. And then where do I go? Oh, and just to pause, when I ask you to graph one of these, basically the way I graph is, did you get the y-intercept right? And if you got it, even if your line does wonky things, I give you half credit. And then I do slope. If you got the slope right, no matter where it goes to, I basically give you half credit. Now the exception is, if your line is wavy, I will take off points for sloppiness. If there's some ridiculous thing in there, I'll take off points for that. But for the most part, y-intercept is half credit, slope is half credit. If you get a full, full credit, if you get neither, no credit. Okay? I might give you one point if you like the negative of the slope and don't go through the y-intercept, just maybe. Anyways, so Ruth, where would I go from there? I'm at five. So let's rewrite this first, because I always like to rewrite it. Negative 5 thirds is either negative 5 over positive 3 or positive 5 over negative 3. And I always write that. Okay, and then? It's okay. So it's rise over run. So this one, up 5. One, two, three. Oh, it's off my graph. But you would go up five and left three, but it's off my graph. I never want to put a point off my graph. Okay, so where am I going to go now? So we couldn't do that one. So where are we going to go? Down five. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, and. Right one. Yeah, one, two, three. There we go. And I'm going to do it again and again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Got it. Oh, I tried to do it again. It wouldn't go on my graph. So I'll draw. There's your line. Perfect. So be comfortable going either direction. Because if the first direction you try and go goes off your graph, 
classic mistake is student just puts a point on a made up spot off the graph, draws it, I take off a bunch of points to be like, you just made up squiggly nonsense. So be comfortable going, if I can't go left, go right, or if I can't go right, go left. Because usually always on a test, I give you a point like way up here and say, ah, oh, it's a slope of like four thirds. And everybody's like, up four over three, and people, everybody's a hand, be like, what? I think you made a mistake. I can't graph that. It, doesn't fit. And I'm like, no, it does, it does, it does. And it's just instead of going up here, you have to go down to here. So be comfortable with that. You're going either way. And that's why I always write it both ways. Okay. <clears throat> so the last problem I'll just mention, there's nothing special, nothing for me to um, do. There's no new information. But sneak peek into chapter four, what if they give you like problem 48 says, now here's two equations written next to each other. It says graph these two equations on one graph, and then just say whether they're parallel or perpendicular or not, and why, and what that means, etc. So, without even graphing it, what can we notice? The slope is the same. Slope, slope. Yeah. The slope is the same, and so we know they're parallel. They're parallel. That's it, right? Right away we notice that. They're not the same line because the line Yeah, but they're not the same line because one goes through one goes through this y intercept and one goes through this y intercept. So that'll look something like that. But you know, before even doing the graph, you can see the slope is two, the slope is two, so these two lines are gonna be parallel. But, but nothing new. Just saying instead of graphing one, graph two, and then remember that vocabulary word from three point three. Nothing. All right, so let's work on it, um, maybe like half hour or so, and then around 12.50, we'll uh, take a break and start uh, going over.